TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it? This is a little light warning screen just in case. But probably not. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Twitch, I mean, twitch.com. That's where you can catch a live stream. Username is at the bottom of the screen, man. Don't forget we do got Patreon and we also got merch. Everything's in the description below, man. Let's get into it. This is Can't Pay Will Take It Away Season 4, Episode 21. I think it's like 25 episodes in this season. And then Season 5, and then it's done, I believe. Talk to me. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. A leading charity reports that nearly 40% of homeless people have lived in properties without the owner's permission. And since squatting in domestic prop- Okay, oh this is a squatters episode. This gotta be negative, right? Properties was outlawed in 2012. The problem has shifted to commercial premises. With an estimated clean- They need to do that in America. Squat it, make squatting illegal in residential properties. Bill of 650 million pounds. Government figures estimate there are 20,000 squatters in the US. Paul Bowhill is a high court enforcement agent. He travels hundreds of miles every week, enforcing writs and repossessing properties. It's 7 a.m. in South London. Today, Paul and several colleagues are facing a real challenge. They must evict a group of squatters. Oh, they rolling heavy. What vehicle is this? What is this? Who've taken over an empty nursery building in Brixton. It's the whole time of the police, Jim. They're going to be with us from the outset. They've been told to expect the worst. So the team have security and police backup. Paul is also being joined by Stuart McCracken and Ian Taylor. But apparently from what we've heard is uh, the police said that they've got apparently been thrown bottles and paints and all sorts, so it could get, yeah, could, get could get up quite feisty, I suppose. You're alright with a bit of urine, it's just like your normal weekend, isn't it, Ian? <laughs> Steve Pinner and his son Ben are already at the site. But this eviction isn't going to be straightforward. Ha <laughs> ha! That house there. Oh my life, that's my favorite phrase. This eviction's not going to be straightforward. Well, let's get negative then. <laughs> Paul and Ben brief the three teams. Ma'am, what are you doing here? We'll surround the building at our appointed positions. They have been known to throw paint and urine, and if they are, please stand back. And we want spotters at the back watching the upstairs windows, just in case there's a television coming out to be dropped on us. Just some more intel. There's also someone inside that also glassed someone recently. Obviously, there have been notes barricaded, which includes fridges. You may find a fridge coming down the stairs. Whatever they face, Paul wants the agents to remain calm. The important thing to remember on this is low key, non confrontational. Let's go. The former nursery is on a main road in Brixton. The agents split up to check all the different entry and exit. Where, well, hold on now, where are this? There's no police presence? Exit point. Just in case? Stuart and Ian guard the front. Well, the front door's been barricaded in, hasn't it? What makes these people dangerous is the fact that they've got nothing to lose. They're already homeless. This is the reason why we need a bit of police presence. At the back of the house, the team have to get over a high fence and locked gate to gain entry. Just pass me a bar. The gate has been nailed firmly shut.
The squatters have been here for over five weeks and have made it hard for anyone to get in. Sorry about it not being so quiet. OK, we, we're not here to destroy things. One of the squatters is waiting behind the back door. Good morning. She's talking about some you destroying stuff. Girl, you don't live here legally. This is, get out. We have a high court writ and we have to execute it, sir. Expect our assistance. Well, that's really unnecessary. We want to do this nicely, calmly. Are you going to open the door? With the man refusing to open the door, Paul steps in. Listen, we'll execute the writ today, come what may. So we'd rather it be done peaceably. We're not going to rush you. You can get vans in, you can get people in. We do not want to make the making of homelessness easy for anybody. OK, but we got The making of homelessness. For, for let's, let's, this is deep. You're already homeless. Just because you're residing here does not give you legal tenancy. You are homeless. You made yourself homeless before you got up in here squatting. You're making it hard on somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the where did they get this privilege from? Generate Tesco's? Just and cutters, we're going to come in anyway. The agents have no choice but to break into the property. Because the downstairs window is open. Take the locks off these grills on the windows first. It's important to get in fast before more entry points get boarded up. <laughs> Successfully in, Steve now smashes open the barricades, blocking the back door. They really in there like they in an episode of Walking Dead, like the, the, with the zombies. This look like a, a zombie. This look like a zombie, like the Oasis, like with Rick and them. Rick and Carl, they set up camp and they built the high walls and barricade themselves in. Like, bro, get a grip on react. Go. All right. I understand things happen, but this ain't it. Sorry. That's fine. Thank you. The they agents don't know what off. to expect or how many squatters they will face. Good morning, sir. I'm sorry that we're going to have to ask you to leave today. OK, so we have one, four, five. Oh, for fuck you now. People living like this. <clears throat> Normal shithole. This is almost as untidy as my house. When you get into these properties, for some reason they just trash the building. And for no particular reason. Why would I want to live in somewhere that's filthy dirty? Hygiene is like next to zilch. I couldn't do it. Ben finds the man he spoke to through the door, Glenn. How many of you here? I thought he, he looked like he wanted them behind the door, sanctuary, squatter, president, prime ministers. Like, chill out, buddy. Well, there's I'm, more. I'm not even sure of numbers at the moment because quite a few people have gone away right. for a few days. Apparently there's about 12, 13 people in there at the moment, but apparently there's 32 classified as missing. So, they might come back, oh. they might not. And I know everybody in there is not taking the piss, you know what I'm saying? I know situations happen, and some people are just, you know, whatever they can do, they gotta do it. But, like, come on, bro. You gotta know that you're squatting, and you have, like, once that eviction note comes, just go. Find your next place. Paul and a police officer inspect a former classroom. 
So just look out for needles and things. And find evidence of Class A drug use. That's a big enough needle to tranquilise a horse, isn't it? Yeah. More squatters have now returned. Oh, police are there. But as they begin to leave the house with their belongings, tensions start to rise. I'm not letting anybody to touch my stuff, right? You wankers, go get real jobs. <laughs> go. <laughs> you wankers, go get real jobs. Oh my God, isn't that the whatever calling the kettle black? Whatever the saying is, like, bro. You have blue hair and you're a grown man. Come on. <laughs> you wankers, go get real jobs. <laughs> go fuck this person. They actually got real jobs. They got 401ks, health benefits, all that. Whatever required. That's okay. Some of the squatters have started drinking alcohol and don't seem in a hurry to leave. As various vans arrive to collect their belongings, the squatters decide to move from the former nursery playground to the yard next door. Next door is evil work. That's crazy. Ben realizes that they could try and squat there instead. He takes immediate action. Hello. Hello, madam. Sorry, you can't get inside my fucking van. I don't want to get inside the van. What I want to talk want? to you. What's the problem? We are not a... Uh, okay, okay, uh, calm down. We are, not, we are people with I dignity. I understand. We are people with dignity. Calm we are not a circus. Look, calm down. Just forget about okay, it. Okay, I don't want to move. Okay, we'll see. You can evict me. Thank you. This is not the same. I'm, not the same. I'm a squat in this place. With tensions rising, will the agents be able to move the squatters out of the yard? That's crazy. Before the situation becomes out of control. Is this not crazy to nobody else but me? They are so entitled. Like I, like I could, I, nah, bro. I'm not on. I cannot be on the squat. I can't be on no squatter side, man. It's just too much for me, man. I like humble yourself. Humble yourself a little bit. If you were humble. Maybe you could get out of this situation, but you out here squatting, acting like you run this, like, chill out. Three high court <laughs> enforcement agent teams were in Brixton, South London, to evict a group of squatters from a former nursery. We have a high court writ, and we have to execute it, sir. Expect our assistance. The eviction started peacefully, but once in a neighboring yard, the city. Bro, look like ninja. Got no ninja to play Fortnite? Like a broke ninja this time. The eviction started peacefully, but once in a neighboring yard, the situation became volatile. Now you're squatting this place now. Now the agents have to use all their years of experience to take back control of the situation. Just forget about okay, it. Okay, I don't want to move. Okay, we'll see. The owner of the van has decided she's not going anywhere. This is just getting a little bit heated out there. We need some action. I seen police give tickets for less. Go make sure she got insurance. Go make sure she got whatever tax. Go make sure she got valid license. Go make sure the thread on her tire is thick enough. You know what I'm saying? Go do it all. Okay, we're going to uh, uh, leave here now. Okay. Now we're going to squat this place. Right. Ben appeals to the other squatters for help. Right. Someone that speaks a bit of sense, tell her to calm down. Don't talk to them. They're not human, obviously. They don't care about the actual human. Oh, no, poor people. Oh, sorry, I'm just doing my job. To minute of responsibility. With the atmosphere becoming tense, Ben tries to reason with the owner of the van. The diminished sense of responsibility is the craziest thing I ever heard coming from somebody who is squatting in somebody else's property. Like, shut, like, STFU. <laughs> like, bro, like, you're a hypocrite Like at this point. Like, be quiet. You can't squat here, madam. 
because you're causing obstruction to the, to the highway. Does anyone want to talk some sense to her? <laughs> when people decided that, do you know what, I'm not actually going to go, it doesn't affect us because at the end of the day, we know you're going and could in the event result in you being arrested for obstructing and refusing to leave. Ben suspects that the squatters are now trespassing on private land belonging to the mosque next door. With no one cooperating, he changes tactic. Good morning, sir. Is the Amman available? Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Um, we're here, obviously, next door to evict the squatters. Okay. The piece of land at the very back. Right. That is yours. Yes. Okay. With your authority. Right. You could have employed my company as a security, and we can remove them that way. No okay. charge. Thank Love you very it. much. <laughs> Take care. Okay, no Thank you. Ah, the Imam loophole. has given Ben the authority to remove the squatters from the land. Just so you know, this land is owned by the mosque. We are instructed by for the mosque for security. It's been four and a half hours since the agents first arrived. Everyone starts to leave, including the female van owner. But some of the squatters are still in no hurry. They'll have to bring it out for you. Yeah, we'll bring it out. The landlord's agent has arrived. He explains the property had been left empty, waiting for council approval to turn it into private dwellings. As soon as Goods has put the sign up at the front, the property was, it was, you know, he had somebody come in and checking it over, but they, they went one night, came the following day, and it was occupied, and that was it. So, I mean, how can you live like that? It's just horrendous, isn't it? The main problem is, I mean, it's great getting properties back for landlords and things like that, but it's the whole damage that's left behind. It's not like when a property is legally rented out, that if it's left in a bad condition, then they can uh, legally take the tenants to court, unfortunately, because it's squatters and they had no legal right to be here. They can't do that. Glenn has a first-class university degree in maths. He sees any empty property like this as fair game to live in. Squatting for me is just my escape from from rent. I don't want to be put in a situation. Bro, you're a bum. You can do so much more. My escape from rent. Just go van life it. Like, come on, dude, you live on the land. Like, well, you can do so many other things. That just that just sounds crazy to me. Where a large proportion of my wages goes towards. Okay, you're an educated bum. Someone who's rich enough to buy a property. I f because they made the right moves in life? and you mad? So uh, everybody should have an equal opportunity in being able to shelter themselves. We will just keep moving on, uh, building after building after building. The agents have turned what could have been a challenging situation into a peaceful eviction. This is the disturbing part. Every one of those people there felt that they had an absolute right to be there. We know from speaking to the agent that the property company is trying to get a change of use so they can turn it into dwellings. In other words, to house homeless people. Not this sort of homeless people, but people who will pay rent. Um, that might have disturbed me a little bit too much. Research from a leading UK financial authority reveals having children increases the probability of debt problems by more than 50%. The hardest hit are single parents who are one and a half times more likely to be in debt than two parent families. Last year, a leading debt charity was contacted by over 60,000 single parents who owed nearly 600 to aim. High Court Enforcement Agents Gareth Short and Craig Vernal work across Wales and Central England. It's a plan I made. Plan. We're off to Birmingham. 
they have a writ to collect a large debt owed by Kaylee Goodwin to a firm of solicitors. The debt totals just short of six thousand five hundred pounds. If Kaylee can't or won't pay today, the agents have the right to seize assets to pay off the debt. The writ allows the agents to make peaceful entry through an unlocked door. Hello? The High Court Enforcement in. Agents, yeah? Yeah, you can come in. No, that's fine. Okay. Can we just close the door? The High Court Enforcement Agents. We're looking for like Kaylee nice Goodwin. House. Is that yourself? No. It's not yourself, is it? She doesn't live here anymore. No, I'll just show you some ID. Somebody, Somebody else has been here looking for Kaylee Goodwin. Yeah. On numerous occasions. Okay. I've been here for six months. I live here, I'm a single parent. I live here with my son. What was your name, please? My name's Melissa. Right. I can be cheeky, Melissa. Do you have any ID or anything like that we can look at, please? Is there anything with your name on? I can walk in the kitchen drawer. Yeah. Okay. I, haven't, I know I haven't got anything. You got I it? I have to go for a job interview um, at a nursing agency and I haven't got no identification for that. What's on there, Melissa? I think I've got a letter. I haven't got anything. Actually, I've got nothing. So whenever we knock the door and we're greeted by somebody we think is the debtor. The first thing we need to do is to find out if it is actually the debtor and we always ask them for ID. It's her. As soon as they say they don't have any ID, that's normally a telltale sign that it is actually the debtor and they're trying to hide away from it. Okay. Let's start telling us now, okay? All right, okay, good. Luck. Perfect, brilliant. Okay. What is this about? We know. Kayla, we're here with the, here with the high court writ, we are. For what? Okay. It's money do you owe to a company? That's 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 getting dealt with by my solicitor at the moment. And what happened was, um, I was in a car crash. Okay. After her car crash, Kaylee filed a compensation claim through a firm of solicitors. All the forms went through. Yeah. And then moved here. I didn't hear anything off them. Um, I then got a letter saying that I owe them money. But I had um, a letter about three weeks ago saying that it's gone to a... That's us. Took it to a county judge. So I've just passed it on to my solicitor. Kaylee has now been taken to court for unpaid solicitor's bills, and the agents are here to collect. The position you're in now, unfortunately, is his solicitor has done nothing with this at all. There's still an active writ, which means. So what can I do? Okay. I'm willing to pay this amount. You've got a couple of different options when it, com when it comes to our stage. You can either pay it, and it stands at £6,474.49. Well, unfortunately, we'd be looking to seize and remove assets from you. I haven't got anything. Nothing belongs to me. Yeah, that... nah, she ain't got nothing. It's empty in there. TV's my mum's. Mm -hmm. I've got a TV upstairs, which is mine. I'm not going to lie, okay. but it's broke. That's why my mum's broke that one. Um... Unfortunately, we will be looking to seize and remove assets. We can't pay it. Ain't nothing in there. A TV at public auction is probably worth about £50. But what is worth the actual debt is a lot more. So whenever we start looking at leverage, the first thing I look at is the TV. Because the last thing they want to lose is the TV. Hey, man, man, man. I'm going to leave me and my son with no TV, basically. TV is not a basic necessity. You got an iPhone, pull up YouTube. T-H-E-E-L-I-T-O-N-E. -E. Don't forget to sub. Hopefully it won't come to that situation. I have if you're saying to us you need like half an hour or an hour to, to try and make some phone calls. Try and make some phone calls. I'm meant to be at work at nine o'clock. I'm a district nurse. I've, I've got nobody with money around me. Nobody. So okay. I don't think I'm making a phone call for money because that's one thing I haven't got. Despite her dispute with the solicitors, if Kaylee doesn't try and raise the payment today, she's at risk of losing what little she has. So what is my options really? Just be honest with me, please. He gave them to you. A couple of different options. We'll give them again. I'm going to say the worst case scenario now. We can seize and remove assets from you. Obviously, we don't want to do that. You can pay it, or you can set up some kind of a payment plan. What, I'd have to pay something now? Mm. They, they'd be looking for some kind of that down payment now, see? I literally haven't got Unfortunately, then, we're going to have to start the season with assets from you. I haven't even got anything. My washing machine's broke. My fucking fridge freezes. 
broke. The only thing that I've got in this house is that TV. That's all I've got. I haven't even got a fucking bed in my bedroom. You that's how bad it is in this. They're not gonna take anything from you, man. They're gonna leave with nothing. And they're gonna give you 36 hours or whatever. Like, I believe you genuinely got nothing in this. No. I haven't got a bed. You've also got a 2010 plate Mazda on the drive. That's not my Mazda. Who's that then? That's my mum, so have a look into it, mate. It's broken down, that's why she's parked it there. You can ask any. I walk. I'll phone my dad now. Okay, we've also. Well, you, you get the car keys are on your kitchen yeah, table. Yeah, that's not my. It's not my car. I don't drive. I, haven't, I don't own a license. I know we lied to you earlier, but I'm not lying now. I mean, I can give you a thousand pounds on Friday. If you just give me till Friday, I get my wage slip will come through Thursday night. I will give you my whole wages. My whole wages Friday morning. If not, you can come in and you can take what you want. We couldn't wait for three days. You can't. Five cases. I'm no family. <laughs> sorry. I'm not saying I don't feel sorry for I them, but I do feel sorry for a lot of debtors. Majority of the time you realise straight away they've got no assets whatsoever. But I know I'm there to do a job. And if I didn't do my job, then they, they could just get away with it. We're not paying their debt forever. The agents can see Kaylee's in distress. And with little to take away, they offer her a lifeline. We need 50% of it. Whether you get 50% or not is worth trying, isn't it? Kaylee makes a call to a friend to try and raise some funds. Hello, Aunt. Listen, where are you? It's Kaylee. Listen, I've got baby. I ain't gonna lie, Kaylee. That's the wrong person to call. They didn't even know who you was when you called. You had to clarify your identity. They don't know who you are. They ain't got you saved in their contacts. Call somebody else. This in my house, right? Are you listening? And listen, I need some money and I'll pay you about 500 quid a month. If not, they're taking everything out of the house now and the baby's in bed. Three grand, I owe them six. I'll give you about 500 quid a month. If not, they're taking everything out of the fucking house and... I woke up this morning and I've got all this at my door. <laughs> Kaylee's friend can lend her the money, but can't get it immediately. All his money takes three working days. It's not good enough. Unfortunately not. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. Oh my, oh my god. Are we gonna sit here and play all day? Like, go ahead, give her the 20, 36 hour whatever thing. Yeah, it's clear. Y'all can take that little TV. I need a few hours. We can give you an hour, we can wait here for an hour if you wanted, so. Why are you trying to intimidate me? I'm you not trying to... Like I'm not... How am I trying? I'm bad, like, I just mean, like, I feel like he's a heartless in my house. Okay. My son's upstairs in bed. I know it's your job, like, mm. I do get it, I understand it, but... Yeah. I'm asking for three days. I can get the money for you in three days. We'll happily wait. We'll be the most patient man in the world for the next hour or so if we wanted to. I'm sorry I just shouted a lot. Don't need to apologise to us, that's fine. I do appreciate that having two burly guys knocking on your door is not the, the nicest thing in the world, especially if it's a, a single mum living on her own. Um, and that's when I just try and take myself down to their level, just try and see where they're coming from, just speak to them on a one-to-one -one basis. How confident are you that that person, or you're going to be, have £3,000 at the end of the week? I will have £3,000 if I have to go and sell myself by yeah. the end of the week. I'm not asking you to do no, that, I'm yeah. serious though. I've got a son upstairs. I need to put it. Okay. I don't like being in debt. Like, I don't like it. But what we could do is put you into something called a controlled goods agreement. So that means we list some items in your property. Right. We leave them here go. with you. Um, and then come Friday, we'll give, we can then give you until Friday to pay this £3,000. Yeah? And then put you into something manageable on a monthly or weekly basis for you. With the promise of £3,000 in three days' time, the agents give Kaylee a payment plan to pay the balance. Would you be happy with that? That's all it takes. If I take a quick seat here, let me explain this easier, yeah? By signing the controlled goods agreement, Kaylee enters a binding contract. Come Friday, now we're going to make that payment. It's that number there. Yep. All the best. Hey, all the best tonight. Thanks, Kaylee. Take care. Kaylee now has three. She's, uh, she's putting too much on her plate, though. Because if she borrows 3000 from her friend, she's going to be paying her friend 500 a month and paying the company the rest of the 3000 that she owes per month. Like, I doubt it. We'll see, though. 
three days to come up with £3,000. If she doesn't pay by the deadline, the agents will be back and she could lose her possessions. Gareth and Craig have managed to get a result from a difficult situation. But in Paul and Steve's next case, Lords who have spent figures. Recent government figures reveal record numbers of homeless families are unable to afford suitable accommodation after they've been evicted by private landlords. In the last five years, there has been a 25% increase of families with dependent children in temporary accommodation. More than 20,000 families were accepted as homeless by their local council in the first half of 2016. High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in West London to carry out an eviction. Next job we're on our way to is a, a repossession. The tenants, Mr Janidi and his family, have lived in the property for three years, but recently fell behind with their rent. There was a, an amount of 6,800 outstanding, but for some reason 3,400 odd has already been paid. Looks as if they were sort of trying. Despite the fact that some of the arrears have been paid off, the landlord decided not to renew the tenancy when the lease expired. That's it, first house in on the left. Of course he did. Quite posh, isn't it? The tenants were given a date by the county court by which to leave. But that date has come and gone. And now Paul and Steve must get the family out today. It's got all bloody concertina grills on all the windows. And a steel gate. It's very secure, isn't it? That's a high security lock as well, isn't it? Yeah. This is an odd one, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody who's obviously seriously paranoid. It's got a burglar alarm as well. Hello, we're High Court Enforcement Agents and we have a writ to repossess the property. Today? Today. Nobody told me. Okay, but we have a, we have a, this is for you. I don't got to. Have you spoken to the council at all? No. Not to the council. And also the, the landlord, he, he asked me to pay money and I gave him money. We can see that you have given him money, yes, yeah. but unfortunately, and I That's... didn't prepare anything, and then they don't know where to go. Okay, okay. Let me just let me just talk to you. How many people? Two children. Two children. Okay. No. See, man, that's why when you're going through the court, you might as well don't even get that landlord no money, man. Take your money and make a deposit for your next place. Okay. What you what the way to do things is to pack enough clothes for yourselves and your children for a couple of days. Yeah. And then you can make an arrangement to come back in a couple of days. Oh, it belongs to me. Yeah, no, not you make a, the no, no, all this no, no, stuff no. Okay, me. no, no, it's okay. So you make it. No, no, please, just take a breath. Okay, just calm. Okay, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. It's clear the eviction has come as a shock to Mrs. Janidi. Her husband isn't at the house, and a family friend, Ramsey, steps in to help. How, how many years you have? Leave the house. No, no, today. Zero. What do you mean? Today. How today? How? It's not possible. Steve explains that after the tenancy ended, the court in instructed the family to leave eight weeks ago. I told him I am ready to pay all the arrears. He asked me what you can pay. I said tomorrow I go and I went paid two thousand five hundred after I wiped everything, and I said. To, to renew, I am very, renew. very ready to give the money and please give me the tenancy agreement. Why I paid him 2,500? Tell me why. For nothing. Mrs. Janidi claims that her landlord agreed to renew her tenancy after she'd paid off. The landlord finessed the situation just like you finessed it in the beginning. Like, I get it. I get it. You're willing to pay him now, but he had to wait. He had to struggle. He had to figure out how to pay his bills. And now he wants you out and he doesn't want that to happen to him 
again this year. I don't blame them. Simple. Some of the arrears. Uh, but the High Court writ orders immediate eviction. If he's played games with you about payment of the monies, that's completely separate to the possession order. Cutting a long story short is we have no option in this. You have to leave today. 99% of what year is mine. Even the floor you I understand. Here is mine. No, I understand that. What about so my the... children? They go to school. They have ex even the floor. See, that's why you don't make renovations to places you rent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They have very close, very, very box. I accept that you have a story to tell, and I'm sorry to be the one who has to do this. I am really big the victim for this landlord, really big victim. Yeah. Should the Lord also save me, not just the landlord? Despite Mrs. Janidi's dispute with her landlord. Good lie, she looked real sad, but you know, every action has a reaction. And the action of you not paying for seven months or however long and running up a $7,000 tab, that would worry me. Don't want it to happen again. Paul and Steve are duty bound to enforce the eviction. This is not law, not, 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 not at all. It's not only it's not a matter of I have, I have expensive things in this house. No, I believe you, miss. I believe you got expensive things, but hey, listen. You get me. <laughs> we are not people from the street. I understand that. While Steve tries to reason with Mrs. Janidi, Paul goes off to talk to the landlord. He's just arrived with a friend who's been helping him with the case. Sorry, she's telling us a story there. Yeah, she's okay. She's shown me the court order, which is... I mean, this is an end of tenancy, isn't it? It's a yeah. section 21. Yeah. She's told she's got to pack her stuff no. now. Yeah. She's got an hour to pick the stuff up. Just give us 15, 20 minutes. It's best if she doesn't... Well, unless... sit in the park. That's all right, unless you're happy with confrontation. Inside, Mrs. Janidi is still refusing to leave. I can't leave now. My life is here. But we can't. By the time your children get back, the council will be closed. OK, oh, that's, that's it. We're going to wait the children. They have a uh, test, they have uh, exams. This is a circumstances where you phone the school and you say, there is a problem at home, the school will let him go. Mrs. Janidi leaves to pick her teenage children up. Family friend Ramsey to stays council, to pack though, their belongings. At the same time. But the agents want to know where Mrs. Janidi's husband is, who is also named on the writ. If he hear the news now, Consider him dead. He's 70 years old. He's uh, he have uh, high blood blood pressure. He have uh, sugar diabetes. He have uh, joint disease. He have uh, oh. uh, heart uh, problem. To have all this on top of that. Bad day. Ramsey tells the agents that Mr. Janidi is in hospital, but the landlord's friend has a very different version of events. The story that we've got from them, collectively, is that the husband is in hospital. Well, as far as we're aware, he just disappeared off the scene. Right. And then that's the, the cock and bull story that she gave us. But we don't believe, we believe he'd gone back home. That's what we thought. Home being to Jordan. Where he came from. Okay. The landlord's friend knows about the payment to clear half of the £6,800 arrears. But with over 3,000 pounds... Somebody just pointed out something very, very, very... You know what I'm saying? She got into a Mercedes. But at the same time, she did get into a Mercedes. But she paid. But you know what I'm saying? Too little, too late. Pounds still owing. He's unaware of any agreement allowing the family to stay. I can't understand why she paid it anyway. Because she was told not to pay it. She was told by, if you read the court thing, she didn't have to pay it. She had to get out on the 1st of December, no money's paid or anything. 50 minutes later, Mrs. Janidi arrives back with her children. Spotting the landlord's friend, she wants answers. I want to ask, no, no. I am busy, I, am, I'm, 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 I don't, I don't do problem. I want to talk, talk, just talk, just talk. I talk through solicitors. If I am, if I am, solicitors, what is for the solicitor did not make for me anything. I want to solicitor. No, talk through your solicitor. <laughs> I want to talk, I ask him just why he did with us like he, this. Just talk to We changed his house to be a balance, a balance, everyone knows. 
I understand your position. But you must go to the council for help. You must. I'm saying, man, never make renovations. There's nothing that you renting. Because once you make the renovations, they're going to get you out of there and charge more for rent. Don't do that. That's a user error. Okay, I know that. Mrs. Janidi and her two children are now homeless. It will be up to the council to provide emergency accommodation for the night. Obviously, they're going to get upset. You know, to all intents and purposes, this is one of the worst days of their life. They're being asked to leave a property which they consider as being their home. The job still has to get done. Recent research has revealed that half of all payments owed to firms are overdue, with the average amount exceeding £40,000. Late payments put almost a quarter of UK small firms at risk of insolvency. Last year, the UK, hold on, wait. Last year, the UK small and medium-sized companies were owed £67.4 in unpaid invoices. Gareth Short and Craig Vernal are back on the road again. This time they're in Bristol to recover a debt of over £10,000 owed by a plumbing business to a supplier. We are going to see Phoenix Engineering Southwest Limited. It's currently to the tune of just over £10,000. It's a big one. Yeah. yeah. The agents have already visited the company's warehouse without success. Notice of the writ has been sent to the home of its director, Jasmine Lovell, and now the agents are on their way to recover the debt. Gareth and Craig immediately spot a potential asset they could seize if Mrs. Lovell can't or no won't. Work there, there's a, there's a bill there, one invoice for purchase under the name of Lovell. So it's definitely this vehicle is linked to the to the defending company. Hello, High Court Enforcement Agent. Hi. Looking for the director or the owner of Phoenix Engineering in South West Limited, please. That'd be me, my lovely, but I don't actually do anything with the company. Okay, but you are the director, are you? Yeah, okay. yeah. At the moment, we've got a high court writ, which, which says that you owe 10,040. Through the dough line, we've just seen an invoice of purchase. £6.93. Right. Well, it also gives us the ability to seize and remove assets from you. Yeah, but only for the business. That's a limited yeah. business. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it doesn't run from here. Obviously, nothing in here is owned by the company okay. because this isn't anything to do with the business. Yeah, you'd have to prove that to us, unfortunately. So what do I do here now? So you've got two different options. You can either pay £10,046.93 right. or we are going to seize and remove assets from you. Right, OK, that's absolutely okay. fine. Leave, I'll leave you there. I'm going to go find Inside, these, these rookies once again, man, letting people close doors in their face. Mrs. Lovell calls her husband, Paul, the manager of the business. There is nothing in, in this fucking house that wants that. Here we are. Right, there's nothing here. Okay. Reference the company. We're going to have to come in and do a search of the property. Then. I'm not going to let you in, my lovely. Okay. Well, I've got yeah. a dog as well. So okay, that's, that's fine, that's fine. Can I have a walk around the back and see how big our dog is? You've got a card, what do you, what do you mean, a card? A, a telephone number where this chap that knows about the company can Okay, you. yes. Gareth passes Mrs Lovell a telephone number, and moments later, he receives a call from her husband. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm a high court enforcement agent. If I, if I stop you there, mate, just because it's going through doesn't mean it's gone through. So you are still liable for this debt. Yes, we are still active, but unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about paying any bills. We okay, what's going to happen? We are going to be looking to see. Yeah, get that truck. You're going to move in this van that's not at the end of the drive. You take that van, my friend, and I'll tell you what, I'm happy to take it. It doesn't fill 
belong to the company. If you're saying the company doesn't own anything, then we will need to see receipts for everything within that property. Don't talk silly. I'm not talking silly, sir. I'm just telling you the facts. You're talking bollocks, my friend. Right. You're not even stepping foot through the door, my friend, unless you bring the police from there. I won't need okay, the... I, I don't need the police, mate. Right. I don't need the police, mate. Right. Okay. So you're going to be there about an hour if I come back down? Brilliant. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Look oh. forward to it. All the best. Tell that, mate. Yeah. Sounds like a whole lot of negativity, and to do it on the phone is coming off as con uh, like condescending, but like, you know what I'm saying? They just, you know, doing their job. They know every facet of their job, you know what I'm saying? With Mr. Lovell saying that he can't pay, will Gareth and Craig get the £10,000 they or came for? Away. High Court Enforcement Agents, Gareth Judd. Now, no after recaps. the agents have waited 40 minutes, Mr. Lovell arrives home. Hello, uh, sir, you all right? Yeah. Mr. Lovell, is there? Okay, so the position you're in now. He did come through large. <laughs> this outstanding balance of 10,000, 46 pound 93 pence needs to be paid. Okay, well, we haven't got the money. Company's okay. not got the money, so it's simple as that. Okay, well, you said to me earlier really, you're winding the company up. I have got no choice. Is there a reason why you're still wearing uniform then? Because that's the only clothes I've got to wear to work. The company's still trading, yeah? Not really. It's still in existence, but it's not trading. Okay, so it still exists. It's still active. So it means, it means the company's still liable for this debt then? Well, debt can't be paid. What's the other options? Remove goods. Anything we believe or suspect could belong to the company. Mr. Lovell produces the logbook for the van. I don't believe the bank can belong okay, to Okay, I'll show you that. Two seconds. This document's not proof of ownership. So that proves to me who's liable to tax the vehicle, but it doesn't actually show who, who owns our vehicle. Every time they show that, that's be killing me, they, the faces on the people, they be like, God damn. But ultimately, that can be seized right now. With his van at risk of being seized, Mr. Lovell decides to tell the agents why he's in so much financial difficulty. Matter. We've got a contract in Bristol, which these claims done, which we've not been paid on, okay. 110 grand. One of the reasons I've not been paid on that contract, yeah. unfortunately, he went bankrupt. Just because somebody owes you money doesn't mean you're going to have to pay somebody else. Don't we? Yeah, no, totally if, agree. If you cannot pass that on. Well, it's okay to owe fine. other people money. No, you need so, to do what you've got to do. Okay. All right. Because at the end of the day, I ain't got nothing money. It's clear that Mr. and Mrs. Lovell's business has hit hard times. Fair enough. But now they're at risk of losing the one asset they have left. The agents give him one last chance to come up with an offer. Well, he obviously don't need the van if he didn't drive it to work. If you come to us and you say, this is what we can do and this is what we propose to do going forward, then we will take that back to the client and see what they have used it on it. Okay, yeah. right, let me go out and check with it. Brilliant. A lot of the times, the builders are working on the big projects and there's a lot of money involved. Um, so if somebody doesn't pay them that, it's always going to have a knock-on effect personally and they can't afford to pay their debts. Five minutes later, Mr. Lovell comes back out of the house. Gareth and Craig are hoping for a substantial say we ain't got nothing. down payment towards the £10,000 debt. Um, she's on the phone to her sister. Yep. We might be able to raise a grand, but that's about it. I'll speak to the office now, see if they accept that. You need to have a think about what you can offer going forward on a monthly basis. His £1,000 offer is a fraction of what he owes. I don't think that's going to be accepted. I'd try it. Gareth calls the office to check whether Mr. Lovell's offer of £1,000, together with a payment plan, is enough to save his van. He's offered a down payment of £1,000. Yeah. And then clearing the balance in three months. From our point of view, Jane, right? We've got no, no assets inside the property. We have got a 56 plate for transit. Um, but that's probably £500 at auction. Yeah. Yeah. He, this fella has a history of non-payment. OK. He doesn't make payment. The claimant will only accept a payment plan if Mr Lovell signs a personal guarantee with them. See what he says. If he says, no, I'm not, not going to do that. Yeah. Say, right, well, in that case, then they're not accepting your offer. Brilliant. OK. OK, Mr Lovell, unfortunately, the... They're saying you've missed a couple of payments with them before. Yeah. Sessions, a couple of uh, other so, suppliers that's gone that way. So what they're saying, you've got two different options. If you want to th 
thousand pound down payment now, yeah. you'd have to be a personal guarantor for that. So you need to sign a piece of paper to say if you're if the company doesn't keep up with the pay, repayments, then you'd be personal personally liable for it. Me personally. You, your wife, whoever signs for it. Can we get a doctor to sign it? <laughs> All right, what do you want to tell you? It's not, it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not time to be funny. Another chat. Go another chat. Good marriage. Sister, make sure she Talk about everything. Yes, you can. Right, right. thousand pounds. So it's a thousand pounds today. A thousand pounds at the end of May. A thousand pounds at the end of June. And then clear the balance at the end of July. No, we should have cleared. Mr. Lovell has been given a lifeline. But as he now has to sign as a guarantor with the claimant, it's not just company assets that are at risk if personal. he defaults, but his own possessions. I just have to take some details from you, sir. I ain't gonna lie, I wouldn't have did that, buddy. Thousand pounds. Switch one away, is it? I doubt. Thank you. Thank you for taking Perfect. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, all the best. Yeah, no. yeah. All the best. Yeah. Yeah. The case is resolved for now. But if Mr. Lovell doesn't stick to the claimant's payment plan, the agents will be back. It's an extra trump card now because we only got the van, yeah. whereas now we've got that and the personal guarantor. But I think from what he's saying, and the reason that he signed it, I think the company, by the end of July, the company will pay the debt anyway. I'll be dependent. Good luck. I hope so. Can I make it? Yes. Sounded good. Two further payments of a thousand were made towards the Phoenix engineer's debt. The agents are still chasing the remaining balance. Can I go and default on the payment plan when the agent? Duh. Knew she was capping. Anyway, man, tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.